Welcome everyone to today's episode of Getting In a College Coach Conversation. I'm Sally Ganga from College Coach. We'll be discussing some really timely topics today. Um, during our last segment, we'll be observing Save Smart Month with uh, Michelle Richardson. She's a college coach finance expert, and she'll be providing us with tips about saving money that are relevant for all of us, not just for college students or parents of college students. And for the first two segments, I'm really excited to have Laura Amagon, did I say that right? Um, of Rudder's coaching or Rudder coaching, excuse me. She and I will be focusing on advice for graduating seniors on how to prepare for college. So you've been admitted, you've paid your deposit, um, but are you really ready? It's more than just getting into the college. So um, Laura is one of those people who can help you get there. Welcome, Laura. Thanks, Sally. Thanks so much for having me today. Yeah, thanks so much for coming on. So I think that what you do is actually more important than what I do. I just want to be really clear about that. And I'm not, I'm not dismissing what I do, which I enjoy. I love doing it. I do think it's important. Um, but honestly, one of the things that I find when I'm talking to parents and students both is that they're so focused on getting into college that it's almost like they think things will be magic once they're there. And these issues that they're facing of maybe it's disorganization, maybe it's shyness, maybe it's all kinds of human, perfectly human, perfectly understandable challenges that their student has needed a lot of help with in high school, that it's just going to go away when they go to college. And I'm like, that's not how it works. Like you need to, don't just think about prestige, think about what's the right college where your child is going to survive and thrive, but also no matter how good the college is, how good of a match it is for your child, for your student, there's gonna be challenges. So I'm so glad that people like you are out there and I would love for you to kind of like dive in and tell me what are some of the major issues that where, you know, first year students in particular maybe really falter when they get to college. Sure. Yes. So, so much good work done by so many people in terms of helping families get into college. So absolutely. It's an important process. I was part of it for a long time. Um, but there, unfortunately, there's just not enough time in the day and the hours and the months, right. For high schoolers and, and college counselors to spend the time with seniors and family re families, really preparing them for the transition into college. So when I work with college students who are feeling stuck or struggling in one one or more of the four areas, the academics, um, the personal areas, personal health, personal wellness, um, their professional growth, kind of where they feel like they're headed professionally, and then the social connections that they're making. So those four areas, there's usually some struggle and we all struggle in these areas. Nobody's perfect, right? Mm -hmm. um, but some students will struggle more in one area or two areas, you know, hopefully not all of them, um, but they feel like they're, they're just stuck or they're not college is not clicking the way that they thought it was going to. They're not having mm -hmm. the experience that they thought they would have, or when they look around at their friends that they think that their friends are having. So a lot of the students, it's like, I did great in high school. What, why does this not feel good here at my school? So then they think sometimes, oh, maybe it's the school. Maybe I need to transfer, which may or may not be the case, but they often feel like if if what they did in high school doesn't immediately translate into the experience that they're having in college, that something has gone terribly wrong, you know? And as you said, like college is a new marathon. I talk about the high school marathon and the college application marathon. So many people finish, like finish it. They, they deposit it's graduation. It's like, hallelujah, especially this year with COVID. Right. And they don't realize that actually the next marathon's about to start. Mm -hmm. um, they've reached the promised land, right? The, you know, college is going to be the best four years of their lives. And, and then when they hit their first roadblock or maybe their second roadblock, like say not a good exam, you know, their midterm grade doesn't go well, or they are not getting along with their roommate or mm -hmm. the major they thought they were going to pursue ends up, they hate it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they find these roadblocks and then the skills that they had in high school, they just don't, translate into their college environment the way they need to as quickly as they want them to. So mm -hmm. many will struggle along and, and kind of figure it out. And then some don't figure it out as quickly as 
we as they could, right? And so that's where I would come in and and work with a student for a short amount of time to just help them figure out one of these four areas or maybe more, you know, whatever their yeah. particular um, needs are, and just get them headed in a slightly different direction with some different habits, some different strategies, and then they realize it's like, oh, college. I've never done college before. You know, even though I did well mm-hmm. in high school, doesn't necessarily mean that college is going to be a breeze, and that I have to adjust my perspective, my expectations, you know, and then they can kind of get into a rhythm. So I think that the biggest challenge is when something happens and they realize that, you know, this place that they thought was going to be amazing, Mm -hmm. that was going to be the perfect fit. They don't realize that they have to make it fit. You have Mm -hmm. to make college fit, right? We talk a lot about fit during the college application process. And it's so important to think about fit, right? Not just prestige or brand or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then when you get there, it's like, okay, it's a fit. It's a magic slipper, you know, glass slipper fit. Well, no, you have, it's like a baseball glove. It's like, you kind of have to, you kind of have to work it a little bit to really make it fit for you. Mm -hmm. So that kind of agency, they don't realize you know, right up front that they have to lead with that. You have to, you have to be really proactive to make your college fit, not just wait and let it kind of unfold, you know, perfectly for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really like that idea that you have to make it fit. Like we want to find you the right college where the, the basic materials are there, but you're, then you're the one that's going to have to make it fit at that point. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So what are some of the things that they can be doing like right now? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very interested in hearing like I'm going to get I have a nephew who is a rising who's about to matriculate at college and like what should I be telling him? Awesome. Yeah. So I really like giving students and parents very clear, simple, actionable steps that they can be doing now, right? As a parent, I know I feel this way. I'm like, just tell me what I need to do, right? (laughs) Tell me what I can do for my my son or daughter, Mm -hmm. right? So the first thing is really the, the first major skill that they need to transition when they get to college is, is called being future focused where Mm -hmm. they're looking forward to what they want to create for themselves, how they want to grow in college, as opposed to always looking back to who they were in high school. Mm -hmm. Right. So even though like nobody cares about your SAT scores anymore, Mm -hmm. like nobody cares about the classes you took or the sports you played or what you accomplishments you had. I mean, it's all wonderful and good. And maybe that was part of what got you to that particular college, but then you got to you know, kind of leave that chapter behind and you're focusing on creating this new chapter. So Mm -hmm. one of the ways to get really future focused over the summer is to actually continue to research your college where you're headed in a much more, I call it a deep dive, a deep dive research. So a much kind of more granular specific level of research on the college you're headed towards. A lot of students deposit, graduate, have a great summer, which is all good. You can still have a great summer, spend an hour a week researching your college. And I have a deep dive worksheet on my website, just, just questions that I've come up with that. I think really, if a student has all of this understanding of the place that they're headed, then they have a much clearer idea of the opportunities um, and resources available to them before they even get there, before they even need them. Mm -hmm. So I talk about it, like, think about it, going to a restaurant, like it's a buffet, like you want to get to your college and think of your college, like a buffet, you're going to go up there. You're going to have this, 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 and you know, what's out there. Like, you know, you're ready to get started and, and trying all the things things as opposed to like a restaurant where you just sit there and you just wait for the waiter or waitress to come. And you're just like, you know, twiddling your thumbs. You want to get to your college and, and know I'm going to start out by trying this activity. I'm going to take these classes and then I'm going to take these classes. And then I'm going to meet with this office and I'm going to get to career services early. You see what I mean? So you're really ready to start building this new college version of you. Mm -hmm. By researching your school in even greater specificity and depth at a granular level over the summer, all on the website, right? You don't have to Mm -hmm. go there again, all on the website, you read about professors and what they're studying and researching and maybe things you could get involved with. You read about internships that people in your major have done. You Mm -hmm. read about the traditions at the school, especially because so many students didn't get to visit their campus, um, you know, because of COVID, um, it's even more important for this year's graduating class to continue to research over the summer. So that's the first thing. Anybody can do it, spend an hour a week, um, talk about it and also talk about it with your, you know, with your family, what you, what you've learned and what you're planning to do when you get there. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the second thing um, is, the, so the second skill that I talk a lot about, and I think is so important for all students, I mean, really everybody, but especially college students is it's called compare and celebrate. Okay. It's a little cheesy, but a lot of um, students will get to college and they keep thinking like they can, they're constantly comparing themselves to the people around them, which is pretty normal. It's actually pretty normal for the brain to mm -hmm. like compare and make sense of the world by looking around, but then they make what they see around them with their friends or on social media. And it makes, and make themselves feel terrible. Like I'm behind, I'm not good enough. I don't have things figured out yet. I have not enough friends and everybody else seems to be doing great. Right. So to really think about being able to look at other people and their successes and what seems to be their, you know, what they have have and not make it mean anything about you, right? That mm -hmm. you can separate yourself from what you see out there. So over the summer, you can actually get ready for this because you're going to be around people in a new way when you get to college, right? Whether you're living with people on campus, or even if you live at home, but you're commuting to campus, you're going to be with a whole new set of peers. There's going to be a lot of comparisons going on, right? Like, you know, oh, this person's at this college, you know? Um, and so to think about spending some time over the summer, just on your, you can do it on your phone. You could just jot it down on paper, go through what you feel like your successes were from the college application process and your disappointments were. Mm -hmm. There's never a time to acknowledge that you just went through a big emotional process mm -hmm. and to actually write down what you're proud of and what you were disappointed by from the college application process. It sounds mm -hmm. Like, wait, what's the point of that? But really it, it helps the student kind of clear out of their mind all the competitiveness from the, from the college application process so that they can get to college and then write down what do you want for yourself, for your college journey. So going into college with some notes, like I wanna do this, I wanna do this, you know, I wanna feel this, right? So you really are grounded. They're really grounded in, in all the good thoughts that they have about themselves. Mm -hmm. Second one is to process and debrief um, from the college application process and what you feel good about going into college. Mm -hmm. So the third one is um, scheduling, how you do time management, how you make a schedule is the one of the biggest skills they're going to have to transfer from high school to college. Um, it's so different, the high school um, in uh, the high school time management to college time management. And so using the summer to actually figure out how you want to write down your schedule and block your schedule um, is probably the best way to practice before college, right? In the summer, you don't really have a ton of accountability. Maybe you have a job, you know, but otherwise it's up to you how you manage your time. So getting into the routine of actually writing down your schedule now mm -hmm. is going to be the best tool for you when you get into the fall. And then just lastly, the last skill is called self-confidence, which is actually a skill. Most people think it's just like a trait, a personality trait, but it's actually something that you learn, you can practice, you can improve on. And so the way to work on self-confidence, a lot of seniors come off of high school, they feel on top of the world, hopefully, like they feel like very comfortable in their social groups and their activities and what they do. And when they get to college, like all of that goes to, like all of the confident feeling goes to awkwardness. You feel vulnerable, you feel uncomfortable <laughs> again. You're like, I don't even know these people, you know, what do they think of me? And all the, all the, you know, awkwardness, think back to freshman year in high school, right? It kind of comes flooding back. So using the summer to actually go out of your comfort zone, I, mm -hmm. I say do four things, like maybe once a week, do something out of your comfort zone where you actually feel nervous. You actually feel uncomfortable. Remember what it feels like to feel uncomfortable now when you're in your home environment, right? Mm -hmm. So like plan something with friends you don't usually hang out with or go to a restaurant. You don't ever eat that. I mean, you know, do something that gets you a little bit out of your comfort zone is a great way to practice for the fall. Mm -hmm. so well, things. Yeah. I mean, as I mentioned to you, my nephew, uh, his parents are making him get a job. He hasn't yeah. had a job before. It's time to practice some new skills, you know, out of your comfort zone. Exactly. Get a little nervous. You don't know what the boss wants you to do. You have to ask for clarification. You have to be on time. Like you have mm -hmm. to, you know, all of those things are just going to refuel your brain of like, okay, I can do new things. 
I can do new things. I'll be all right. I'll learn. It'll be uncomfortable for a little while. And then you get into your groove. And that's exactly what's going to happen when he gets to, you know, his freshman year college classes and friends and dorm and all of that. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Well, we're going to take a short break now, but Laura and I will both be right back.